Hi everyone, this is HMRS S video number 10 and you are most welcome for it. Last video we introduced Excel cell reference and we talked about two different references. Relative cell reference and then absolute cell reference. And we reserved mixed cell reference for this video. And now we are in for the mixed reference. And also in this video we are going to see how the new Excel engine works by seeing what is called dynamic spilled array in this very video we are watching let's switch on to it and we see what we are meaning by mixed cell reference we're going to see two examples that will help us to understand mixed cell references and the first one we're going to see the multiplication table if you remember from our lower primary school when we just started school at the back of our exercise books we used to have the multiplication table and in this video, we are going to see how those tables were generated. In row 4, I have the numbers from 1 to 12. And in column A, I also have the numbers from 1 to 12. We want to see something like 1 times 1, then we put the number here. 1 times 2, then we put the numbers here. 6 times 4, then we put to the corresponding cell. 11 times 11 and then we put in the corresponding cell there but we don't want to do all this one at a go we want to do once and then we just copy it and everything calculate by its own so let's click on cell b5 and then we start from there every formulas in excel start with an equal sign so equals to so i'm going to start by clicking on cell b4 times cell a5 that one is going to give us the answer of one times one now if i control enter then i try to copy it to the side you can see that i'm getting big big numbers this is not correct reason being if i come to the last cell here and then i hit the f2 key now this one is seeing the number which is here times this one this is not what we want we want our cell reference to move only in row four and then column a so we need to find a way of locking it in a way that it moves only within row four and then column A. So I'm going to control Z, delete, equals to B4. Before I even multiply it with what is there in A5, we want to lock it in a way that when we copy it to the right hand side, it moves to C2, D3, E4, like that. So what we do, we need to go before 4, and then we put there the dollar sign, like this. That means we have locked row 4 but it's free to move to any column. That means when we copy it to the right hand side, column B we will move to C, and then to D, then to E. But when we copy it down, it will stay locked to row 4. That's why we have put the dollar sign before 4. So this reference here, we are going to multiply it times A5. Now, for this case, we want, when we copy it down, we want it to move to 6, 7, Eight, like that but when we copy it to the right hand side we want it to stay locked to column a so that one we put the dollar sign before a that is what is called a mixed cell reference control enter when i copy it to the right hand side now before i copy it down let's first come to this cell and then when we hit the f2 key to check it you can see that it's working control enter now let's highlight it and then we double click and copy it down now let's come to the last cell here. When I hit the F2 key, I can see that it's working very well. But remember, we have put there the dollar signs manually. So let's control enter. Now let's scroll down a bit and we see a better way of doing it. Instead of putting the dollar sign manually, we want to use the keyboard. So let's click on cell B21 equals to B20. We want to lock this one on row 20. And leave the column free to move you remember last time when we were doing absolute cell reference we were locking it using the f4 key this time around we're also going to use the f4 key to do the mixed cell reference so when you hit the f4 key once you get the absolute cell reference where both the column and the row is locked now when you hit it the second time it locked the row that is row 20 that's why the dollar sign is put before 20 and leave the column free to move. Now when you hit it the third time, it locked the column and leave the row 
free to move. That's why the dollar sign is put before B. And again, when you eat it this first time, it goes back to the relative cell reference where nothing is locked. So what we are going to do, we are going to eat the F4 key twice so that we can lock the row and then we leave the column to move. So F4, F4 times A21. Now this A21, we want to lock the column and then we leave the rows free to move so that when we copy it down, it moves to row 22, 23, 24 like that. So we are going to eat the F4 key three times. F4, F4, F4. That one will lock for you the column and leave the row free to move. Control enter. Copy it to the side. Double click and send it down. Now let's come to the last cell and then we hit the F2 key to check. You can see that this one is looking at the correct fill and this one is also looking at the correct fill. Enter. Now let's scroll down a bit and we do what is called the dynamic spilt array. Now this dynamic spilt array only works if you have Office 365. So let's click on cell B37 equals to Instead of giving it a single value like the way we are doing it, we are going to give it the array of values. So let's start with the rows. We want all these rows times all these columns. And we are done. You simply hit control, enter. And the results spilled to the entire range, giving you the same results. This time around, you don't mind about the reference. You don't mind about whether to lock anything. You simply do what's called a dynamic spilt array and the results will spill the way you have seen it. Now, in order for you to know that what you have done is a dynamic spilt array, you can see that the results that, that are spilled has some blue box covering it. That is the first way you can know that what you have done is a dynamic spilt array. Then secondly, the field where we have put our formula is this field here. Now when you check in the formula bar, you can see that the field is serving the formula that we have put there. But when you click on any other cell that we didn't put the formula in, it's grayed out. Reason being, the results are just spilled there, but the formula doesn't live there. The formula only lives on the cell where we have put the formula. By the way, if you double click on the cell, you can see that there's nothing living there. Double click on the cell, there's nothing living there. Even if you come to the last cell here and then you double click, there is nothing living there. Even the formula bar is showing nothing. The formula only lives on the cell where you put the formula. If I double click on this cell, I can see that my formula is there. And by the way, if I come here and then I delete what is in that cell where we have put the formula, watch what will happen to the rest of the fields. Delete. Everything is gone. Reason being, the formula doesn't live in any of those cells. So I'm going to control Z and everything is back. So let's scroll down and then we see the second example. So now this table here is showing the payment budget for the first TB prevention meeting. Now the TB is tuberculosis and the meeting is going to be from Monday up to Friday. And each day is going to be attended by different categories of people from the VHTs going to LC1 up to the district leaders. Now, these are the payment located for each category. This side here is showing the estimated number of attendance. Click on cell B55 equals to B54. Now I'm going to hit the F4 key twice to lock the row, but not the column. F4, F4. So I'm going to multiply it times A55. Now this time around, I'm going to lock the column. So I'm going to hit the F4 key three times. F4. F4, F4, control enter. This time around, start by copying it down and then copy it to the side. Come diagonally to the last cell and then hit the F2 key. You can see that this one is looking at the correct cell reference and this one is looking at the correct price. So 140 times 50,000, you get the results of 7 million. So in case 140 district leaders attend, then you need to prepare 7 million for that day. Now, let's also scroll down and we do the spilt array equals to attendance times price. Control enter. Boom. That is what is called the spilt array in Excel. The formula only lived here. The rest of the field is grayed out. Double click in the field. Nothing is living there. 
double click the cell where you put the formula everything is there enter so that is it for mixed cell reference in microsoft excel if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe and then you share with your friends until next video hmns video number 11 and then we meet again thank you